I used to follow friend and like fighting, always go for the dean office, short skirt, tight blows, you name it. I was one of the first who used to involve in extortion, always involve in fighting. Schools should be places of learning, a place to discover who you really are and to truly start your journey of discovery and wonder. However, for many schools in Jamaica, it's like a battlefield, a den of indiscipline, survival of the fittest. Well, the Safe Schools program was introduced in 2004 and has achieved some success, but there are still those alarming cases of extreme disruptive behavior, some even fatal. But for those schools that have made significant strides, what did it take? Live at 7 went back to school. From Jamaica College in St. Andrew, to Spanish Town High School in St. Catherine, and to St. James High in the West, there were some serious challenges. JC was very chaotic. Um, from what I heard, uh, the kids weren't going to class. Teachers were not going to class very, very often. And the kids were just left up in many senses to roam and get into a lot of trouble. There was a propensity, uh, I must tell you, um, for cells of, you know, what we call gang activity. Um, in fact, now you see lunchtime, it would be almost chaos um, in the school, going into the canteen. There were a lot of fights. 2009, when I became a dean, we actually had structured gangs inside there. You have the clans, you had the one order. Students could not take um, orange kerchief, neither could they take a green kerchief. And I don't think I sat in my office maybe for the day for an hour. You had to be on the corridor and you'll be taking a green kerchief and somebody doesn't like it and a fight starts. Based on the community and the value system in the community, you're going to find that a number of them don't value education. And so because the examples who they see, the persons who they look up to, and for them, some of them think that getting sick, see, it's not important because they won't get a job or some think that they won't live to see a certain age. Two boys had an altercation and one student used his cellular phone to call members of his community and they jumped the perimeter fence and they were brandishing. About six or more young men came brandishing weapons. Um, one had a gun and others had machetes. Regular basis, you would have a lot of fightings. Um, a lot of fightings went on where students were always stabbed. Uh, students, they would um, come to school. Sometimes they would come and they would hide their weapons that they take to school along the, the driveway. And I mean, sometimes they even gave them to the vendors to put up. The teacher that was there taking care I had to leave because I was a class teacher at that time, but I had to leave to attend to another matter. He was there marking the register and upon my return he had to go to the bathroom. And so a young man left, went outside for his machete, came back and he chopped the other one, chopped off his head. So he chopped him in the neck. Mm -hmm. so, He's so scared. So what, what, what did that do to you? I mean, how did you feel when that happened? I was devastated because I was a farm teacher and for some time it really took a toll on me. But. A change was coming. Whenever they commit an offence, we would not send them or would send them to counselling. We have at least three to four safe school officers on any given day, and they will assist in ensuring that you no know, weapons are taken onto the compound. What we have realised is that students over the years thought that when instructions are given, it is just a nine-day wonder, and then we go back to what they think is normal. What we have proven is that if you are consistent in your actions, then eventually, instead of them wearing us down, we wear them down. We decided that first thing, we're gonna deal with um, conduct management. 
I became the father for all of them. I'm still the father for all 2,200, <laughs> and I'm not a weak parent, right? So it meant serious business. Within a year, you know, before two years, um, there was a change because I recognized what were the problems. We did our school improvement plan. We had causes such as low self-esteem and so forth. So I said, okay, we need to work on that. Yeah, so even when we started to um, put the children into areas where their interests lie. Right now I have more than 4,000 gallons of water. At the school year, we didn't have that. Whenever the water is um, cut off from the main, we would have to suspend school. No, we don't need to do that. That was done by the plumbing department teacher and the students. Perimeter fencing were put up around the school com compound. Persons from the neighboring communities could not just walk onto the school compound and do whatever. Because sometimes the violence started, you know, in the school, in the neighboring communities. And they would just come into the school compound and play out here. Problem students, the list is given to the, the dean of discipline. And she would like call in the parents to do um, discussion with them about their, 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 their children and if something does not come out of that then they would be referred to a remediation centre like Flankers, Peace and Justice. Many of these students here, they don't live with mother and father. About 10% live with mother and father. Some of them, they have lost their father. Some fathers are not um, showing up. So even when you send for the parents, sometimes they have to rent a parent um, downtown to come um, when it's report day. There's a deficit with these students. That is why they perform poorly in GSAT, you know, and GNAT. And they are placed in these schools. If emotionally there was stability, they would be scoring 90 like the others. This is how we approach things at JC. Good morning, how are you? I'm Good. Right. All is well? Yes, sir. Good. So this is the, this is the new JC. It's a relationship. It's, it's really understanding in the young people. I don't think that the kids are born bad and that sort of thing. It's about how we socialize them. And for example, I instituted a policy that there's not to be any fight in the school. Anybody that fight, whether you're the victim or what have you, because you would have contributed to the fight, mm -hmm. takes two hands mm -hmm. to clap. Um, and so if somebody is attempting to fight, you are to walk away and report the youngster so we can deal with it. What was also important was to reinforce the positive. So we can't talk about just negative. We have to talk about how do you now get kids to conform and validate. So we had regular merits, not only for academics, but also for behavior. After we talked to the student and we recognized that there are issues at home, we will, we will call in the parents and if needs be, we will visit the home. It would be nice if social workers could be in schools because that would help the guidance counselors to be more effective. Some of the students themselves speak of the change in their lives. After a while, um, when we did in, uh, think a grade nine, yeah, Miss Collins did one summer program and she did teach us all we talk to each other and communicate and how to deal with anger. And one guest speaker did come and in that about film childhood and how we missed the day in a gang and all of that. And in my talk, then I may take in him and say, look into life and I say, if I want a different person, I want him to change and all that. I say, me can't be that the person there and people can look at me as a different person. I stop and I think and I look into life and I see that badness doesn't pay and that. It doesn't really make any sense. I try to make everyone afraid of me because by the end of the day, it will only be affecting me and my future. I don't want to be like the men in my community because I don't want to go through the same thing that they are going through right now. Don't have any job, have to be doing illegal stuff. So I just want to be a righteous person in, in all quality way that I can. So can these intervention strategies be replicated in our schools across Jamaica? If not, can our schools ever be totally safe? It's going to take a lot of willpower. It's going to take vision also. And it's going to take caring for the children and realize where they are actually coming from. And we are the adults. We are persons who are to set example. And by virtue, we get a job to do. And we have to give an account to God at the end of the day. Money is not a problem. Most time we talk about money. Money is no problem. What you need is the ambition, as you see on the wall there, and the will to do things. What is key 
in the school. My own experience is the human resource. Do you have enough uh, teachers and support staff? Uh, do you have security that can you know, assist in the whole maintenance and management? And don't give up because there's a time when we at St. James High maybe would have wanted to give up but at least somebody stepped in or the ministry stepped in and we were able to get the resources to do what we want to do. So just continue to press on in the name of education.